Robbie Williams Rewind. Welcome to Robbie Williams Rewind. We are the champions. I'm Matt. And I'm Lucy. And along with help from special guests, we take you on an in-depth rewind through the solo career of multi-award winning singer, songwriter and entertainer Robbie Williams. Today, we're very excited to bring you another very special guest, someone who's been a part of Rob's band since 2006. Welcome, Sarah Jane Skeet. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Hi. Hey. Lovely to have you on the show with us. <laughs> yeah, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so firstly, on behalf of Rob's fans and our listeners, can we offer our congratulations on getting married and having a baby? I was about to go, oh, I haven't put my ring on. <laughs> I am at home, just to say. <laughs> I don't wear it around the house, but thank you. <laughs> so before we get to discussing um, your time with Robbie, let's rewind back to the very beginning of your musical career. Um, we and our listeners really love hearing, your, you know, having the opportunity to hear from Rob's band members and actually understand your story and your background as obviously as well as your time working with Rob but we want to hear about you today. So Lucy. So you came from a, or you come from a musical family your mum, stepdad, auntie and sister are all musicians so please yeah. can you tell our listeners about them and how they influenced your career growing up? Um my so my mum yep she's a a quite a big singer in our industry. Um, she actually, weirdly, sung on um, the original, now she'll kill me because I'll probably get this wrong, I want to say it was Rock DJ and Millennium. Oh. Um, and, yes, yeah, she sung with loads of amazing people as well, and um, as well as Rob, I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she, um, yeah, she has obviously been a huge um, influence um, my stepdad is also, he's a saxophonist. My sister is also a singer. My auntie is in the first female reggae band. Mm -hmm. Um, actually when I start, when I started Rob, um, which was, it was actually the end of 2005. Okay. Say so the tour was actually 2006. Yeah. Uh, that was actually with my godfather, who's also a musician. So, um, ah. I've been very, yes, very, very influenced by by all the musicians in my life. It's been a, well, actually, I'm lying. I never wanted to do music because it was su such a big thing in our family. Yeah. Sometimes you feel a bit like, I'm going to be different. I'm going my own path. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and what were your musical influences growing up? Um, so I, I would say, it, I think I was a, I want to say 90s girl as in, I didn't start picking my own music until obviously mm. you, you, you become, I was an 80s baby, but a 90s child, if we say. Yeah. Um, so I was really into like SWV and like lots of American artists. I was like, oh, they're amazing. Um, but sort of growing up, and then I also really loved um, Prince was like, yeah, he was the man. Mm -hmm. um, and Michael Jackson, obviously huge in our house. Um, Shaka Khan was, my mum actually toured with her um, quite a lot when I was growing up. So I actually saw Shaka quite a lot oh, growing wow. up. I don't think I realised. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I realised at the time. Okay, yeah, Shaka's at our house. <laughs> It didn't, obviously, I didn't connect it with the music I was listening to. Um, then years after growing up, I'm like, oh, my God, actually, that was a pretty big deal. So, wow. um, yeah, that's just to name a few. That's lucky. Oh, Very nice. Tina. Anyone who knows me knows I love Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> she is a huge idol for me. Yeah. And do you play any musical instruments? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't persuaded to play the saxophone? Um, do you know, I when I was at school, I learned clarinet. And I remember going to a gig with my mum, as, as I would growing up. And I saw one of the horn players and he had like this mark, like a really red mark on his lip. 
And um, if, when you're a child, I guess kids just say stuff. So I, I was always that kid, like, what's that? What's that? <laughs> And I was like, what's that on your lip? And he was like, oh, when you get good at your clarinet, you'll get one too. And that was it. I was like, never, <laughs> never playing this again. <laughs> That's funny. So that was the end of my clarinet uh, <laughs> career. <laughs> Love that. Um, when you were 15, you worked with a producer writing some songs and one was picked up and included on the soundtrack for the film, What's the Worst That Could Happen, starring Danny DeVito. And that led you singing backing vocals on a song that Queen Latifah recorded for that soundtrack. What was that like? Oh, um, it was actually a feature. I was featured on it. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what? Now when I look back, I'm like that. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. But at the time, I think I was so young. Again, I don't, I think when you're young, you miss so much because Mm. you don't actually realise you know, what you're, what you're doing as in how mm. big it is or, you know, to you, it's like, oh, go to the mm. studio and sing and fine. <laughs> and um, actually now looking back as a, you know, a grown adult looking back, I'm like, oh, can I do that now, please? Can I, do? Can I get that opportunity again? But um, yeah, I think that's all. I think oh, it's, it seems like a lifetime kind of is a lifetime ago. Um, but at the time, it was it was like a dream. It was sort of like, oh, this is what we're doing. One day you're in the studio, sort of writing. So I've got an idea for a song, and um, the next is on a soundtrack. And then as I went out to America, I got signed to um, Interscope, and went out to America to finish the album. And I literally, I think I had not even been there a few days. It was literally just in the studio a few days and they were like oh my god you know that the soundtrack's going out soon and we need you know we need some vocals on this Queen Latifah tune you know do you, can you come down to the studio and I was like <laughs> fine um and I think I just did it and kind of was like well, you know <laughs> but um yeah I think if I got that call now I it would be yeah I would I'd probably start warming up now <laughs> I'd be warming up ready for the you know for the session <laughs> time I'd be like yeah but um yeah so it was a lot of fun it was a crazy time um and it, as, I, as I said I think you don't really realize when you're young just what you're how great some of the things you're doing are yeah. which I think is one of the things of this industry sorry I'm, I'm a blabber blabber <laughs> um I think because we concentrate so much on people being young and getting into this industry when you're really young, I think the downside of that is you do so many things, some incredible things, and you don't really realise how great they are until years later when you look back and you're like, now I'm old in the industry and I'm sort of old and jaded and I've done all these things. And then you look back and you're like, wow, if I could do that today, my Mm -hmm mindset would be completely different I think I would enjoy it in a different way so you enjoy it then but it's kind of like oh yeah (laughs) now would be like oh my god (laughs) (laughs) and then your first break as a backing singer was with my favorite female singer Kylie Minogue how did you get that job and did you enjoy it I love Kylie I love Kylie um she's just the nicest lady I that sort of came very again very abruptly I think um somebody said there was some auditions I I was like okay great they were like on Friday if you want to go and I auditioned on the Friday and I think I flew out to Australia on the Monday wow so it was it, again it was sort of a whirlwind I think now if that was the case I'd be a bit oh my god I'd be like panicked getting ready but again, I think when you're young, you're like, oh, yeah. I mean, I'd seen Australia on like Neighbours and Home and Away <laughs> and had, I don't think I, number one, had any clue how long that flight is. Yeah. Never had jet lag before, so no idea oh. what it is. And I also packed for the summer because I've only ever seen the summer. <laughs> yeah. The way they don't shoot in the winter, surprise, <laughs> 
surprise. <laughs> so I thought it was just hot all year round. So I sort of rocked up to Melbourne, I think it was like in June, with just vests, a jean jacket, a few T-shirts, shorts, <laughs> literally like I was on a trip, you know, to the Bahamas. And I remember... Um, we, and we landed, I think, at like five in the morning or something ridiculous. It was freezing cold. And all of a sudden I saw these obviously well-seasoned uh, musicians and travellers undoing their cases, pulling out puffers and jackets. Because obviously it was summer <laughs> in England. Yeah. They were pulling out their puffers and their jackets. And I was literally trying to button my jeans jacket as, <laughs> as high <laughs> as it could go. Like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> so, um yeah, that was a huge, huge wake-up call. They they have a winter. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> and you also recorded a song with Michael Jackson. How did that happen? Um, what was that like? I feel like there's a theme coming here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, again, so that one, um, I, I think I had just started the door with Rob. So, again, I think... Life was a bit of a whirlwind anyway at that point. And I got called to do a session. They were like, yeah, we need you know quite a few singers to do this session, but we can't say who it's for. Mm. Uh, and I've sort of had, you have that on quite a lot of sessions because I guess people don't really want you to talk about things or say, you know, people have got an album or something coming out, they like to keep it quiet. So I think as musicians, we're used to going to the studio having no clue who you're going to be singing for. Um, and we arrived and we were all mulling around in the room. And then suddenly, <laughs> out walks Michael. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, and with the like musical director. And, and we were all just a bit like, so, wait, what? <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So, yeah, and that's kind of, that was it. So obviously not expecting it at all. But um, and his kids were there. They were obviously very young at the time. Um, and he was just really normal, just, you know, sort of he was in the, he went into the, what do you call it? The, my the brain, booth. baby brain, baby brain. Booth. No, not, sorry, we were in the booth. He went uh, into the, uh, where studio? The, uh, the studio, that would yes. be the um, And just sort of watched through the glass and um, just sort of directed. And it was a bit like, okay, okay. This is like huge. I think I was old enough then to understand. Yeah. This is huge. So, yeah, it was a, an amazing, amazing day. I think I came out of there just on, like, I don't know, a cloud of million. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what has just happened? <laughs> yeah, incredible. And who else have you worked with over the years? What other sort of memories do you have before we move on to Rob? Um. Okay, so... It's really strange because I feel like years and years ago, you would always be asked sort of your CV. You would always have a CV prepared. <laughs> and then I don't know what happened, but people just stopped caring or asking for that. So now when I try and think of things, I'm like, oh, I can't even remember that point in my life. <laughs> but um, so I do apologize if there's any huge people that I miss. I am just terrible at this. Um but I, oh, I toured with Mika for quite a long while. Mm -hmm. He's incredible. Yeah, he's wow. great. Yeah, we saw him Such at the Art of White energy. Festival. I mean, unbelievable amount of energy. One of the most, <laughs> one of my favourite tours I've ever done. He, yeah. every night was just, you, yeah, it was just incredible. He, also, I just, I've never seen anybody who can, I mean, I, I can't speak any other language. I'm just, I'm struggling with English, as you can <laughs> probably tell. But he can literally go anywhere in the world and speak the language. Wow. I've never seen anyone. Wow. So, like, obviously, I know a lot of us will sort of get by, will know a few words, or you practice beforehand, you know, what to sort of say to the audience. But like whole conversations, uh, he'll he'll be speaking to the audience in a complete other language, and I'll be sat thinking, I know this point in the show. Do I like like where are we? Where are we? <laughs> because he he just yeah is incredible. But as a performer, every night his energy is just yeah he's incredible. So yeah, yeah he was amazing. 
Um, I toured with James Morrison for quite a few years. Again, another amazing. I don't actually think I've worked for anyone that's not been <laughs> amazing. Of course, I think that's a theme here. <laughs> yes, I, I do. <laughs> some people who are mean and horrible and have been <laughs> like, oh, this person was awful. But <laughs> I've been really lucky, I think, and worked with some really lovely, lovely people. Um, I think that says something about you as well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe I just talk too much and don't give them a chance to really <laughs> <see me. laughs> But um, yeah, they're, yeah, um, oh, Boys Own, I toured with them uh, a few years ago. Um, they were all lovely. Um, Ellie gosh. Golding, is that right? I was just about, I was just about to say <laughs> Ellie Golding um, was from like 2016, I think. Um, again. Absolutely, just a lovely lady. Every show with her is always a lot of fun. She's just got, I think, such a unique voice as well because I've yeah. never would have so much power, but yet be so delicate. Have you know? She's just incredible at what she does. Yeah. Right. So on to Robbie. On to Rob. <laughs> so you say you started working with him in two thousand and five. Can you tell us how you got the job and was it an audition? How excited or nervous um, were you? Again, that was that was another one of those. Um, yeah, we've got an artist. Um, it was an MTV Awards. I don't think we knew at the time uh, who it was going to be for until the rehearsals started. Um, and then we we were a huge choir. We were like 12 of us for an MTV Awards uh, show in I want to say Germany somewhere he was doing yeah um and it was an incredible show incredible night and um, we all had a lot of fun and then there were sort of whispers oh he's going on tour next year and he's gonna you know take some singers with him and I think because there were so many of us I think you sort of just think oh, oh. You know, I think there were 12 of us and he was taking six. So you were like, yeah. it's 50. I might be there. I might not. Mm. So I might get my hopes up. Um, and unfortunately, I was one of the six. And um, that was the Close Encounters tour, which was obviously amazing for me because it was the first sort of world tour that I'd done at that point where it was it was pretty constant. I think it was like an 18-month tour or something. And yeah. It was a really long one um and actually as I said my uh, godfather was on that tour with me so I wow. kind of as much as it was a lot to be away from home for so long at quite a young age I think having sort of a lot of people I knew and it felt like family anyway and then obviously having my godfather <laughs> keep me keep me on point it was um it was just a great great tour yeah, and you went everywhere on that one, South America. Everywhere. Yeah. Like I, I think some places I've never been back to since then. It was, <laughs> I mean, I think the rehearsal alone was like a few weeks in, uh, gosh, my brain. I want to say in Cape Town we rehearsed. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was it in a vineyard? I remember thinking, I'm literally singing, leaning on a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Is this real? Is this real? Uh, <laughs> the best wine ever. It was such a like a lovely. After we left, I think I shipped home like because <laughs> it was just so lovely. Um, and then getting to sort of see a lot of South Africa, which again I haven't been back. So if I hadn't done that on that tour, I don't think I would ever have got to have seen a lot mm. of the places. Yeah, and I think it's always different when you are on tour as much as sometimes you get to see things and sometimes you don't you see the airport and the hotel but on that particular tour it was just laid out so nicely we really got to be everywhere and it was yeah pretty incredible <laughs> and when did you first meet Rob and what was your first impression um so we met Rob um on stage at the MTV awards um he sort of came down considering there were 12 of us he sort of walked down shook everyone's hand said hi to everyone um and was just from the start he was just very down to earth very nice very chilled 
um, I say chilled. I don't know if we describe Rob as chilled. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a ball of energy, but really, really nice. Just You yeah. just felt at ease immediately. Yeah. Great. So you joined Rob's band when he wasn't in a good place, as evidenced in his Netflix documentary. As a newcomer to the band, was it hard to work in an environment where he was in a bad place? No, because I would say Rob is, um, a, beyond being just a very professional, obviously, he, um, I think he's really good at sort of hiding things and getting on with things and you will never know, you know, sort of what he's going through. He'll still put on the smile, perform, and I think that's sort of in him. He's just he's just a performer. He knows how to he knows what people want, he what people want to, you know, see from him. And he's just really good at putting everyone at ease. So I don't think he would ever sort of show you or like he wouldn't act like, you know, miserable or crazy to us because I don't think that's him. I think mm. he sort of, obviously anything I guess he's going through, he's very good at keeping to himself and keeping on with it. And I think, um, yeah, now when I look back at the documentary, it's very much like, wow, like that's a lot. Yeah. You've been through a lot. And I think it's easy as well when we're touring, um, everyone's... I know it sounds weird to say everyone's a star in their own movie, but you're so sort of caught up in what you're doing and what, you know, I guess for me being young, it was like, oh, everything was amazing. And, you know, you're so caught up in things that I don't think you ask the person even next to you, are you okay? Because yeah. I think you just expect everybody is having the best time ever. And, um, yeah, I think he's obviously very good at, at still performing and like you would never you look watch any of the shows you would have never known he was going through anything because mm. it's just a great performer he I think his special gift is making a huge stadium feel as if he's just talking to you individually it's just and he has that even in just normal life I think he just has a way of speaking to you making you feel like He's, you know, it's mm. about you. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this, this is Rob. <laughs> Robbie Williams. <Yeah. laughs> I, mean, I am the queen of saying the wrong thing or putting my foot in it. At, <laughs> like literally at all times. Anybody <laughs> tells me, like I literally should just chew a shoelace at all times. Because I'm <laughs> and I think Rob is... Um, I still say the wrong thing. I feel like I see him and I'd say good, good, goodbye instead of hello. I'm just <laughs> always the wrong thing. But he just has such a nice way of sort of laughing and just being like, yeah. <laughs> like he accepts all of your flaws, all of your, you know, he your imperfections. He's very good at sort of just... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's Sarah. <laughs> and we move on. <laughs> so then there was the Take the Crown tour. Well, the, the album first and the little intimate gigs when Nyana and Dinosh joined the band. How was it performing in those smaller venues? Um, do you know what? I, I love the smaller venues apart from, and this is going to sound very vain, um, I can't bear how hot we get on stage. Ah. I spend like an hour before like getting my hair all straight, getting it all right. Oh yeah, doing our makeup, <laughs> doing you know, yeah, we look in the mirror ready for the show. Okay, let's go, guys. <laughs> Song two, literally I'm like I'm just like, yeah, a melted candle with like my hair becomes like bread and starts rising and it's it's a mess. So whenever I look back at any photos I obviously taken from the audience and stuff, which is always lovely. Like we get some great photos, which I always think, oh, they they came obviously to see Rob. So whenever we get sent photos of ourselves, it's a bit like oh, that was sweet. Oh, but then there's always that side where we would sit and look at them and be like, I couldn't. Nobody told me my eyebrow would literally, <laughs> you know, or, or like no one could have told me. I just looked like a drowned rat. It's like. <laughs> 
Okay, great, guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I do like a smaller venue for the intimacy, but yeah, they're often very hot. Like I understand why Beyonce has fans right. around. You know, obviously that's her thing, and you can't really, as a BV, be like, oh, "I'm going to need a fan." Just <laughs> at all moments, it's yeah, you kind of just die at the bed. <laughs> but was it nice having the girls join you? Yeah, I um, mean, oh, they're they're lovely. I mean, um, I think it was again. I would say, oh, ten years ago seems like a different me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we obviously them coming in again, then it was you're sort of learning new people, learning new new um voices, but I think that always is the easy bit. Obviously, we're not hired for who gets on with who. So I it's always a wonderful thing when you meet people and they just fit in and they're just lovely because you always sort of worry. And again, I hear horror stories yeah. Of, yeah. of people not getting on. So whenever people do come and they just fit in, it's always like, oh, oh that's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and they are very, very funny. I think American humour and English humour is very different. So I think it might have taken them – a little bit longer to sort of um I don't know what Canadian humor is to be fair Um, I think so I'm gonna say she had an American humor (laughs) I think it takes a minute for for everyone to sort of work out like sarcasm I don't think they got (laughs) I am the queen of sarcasm I love (laughs) comment um but yeah they were just both amazing so yeah, now I can obviously class them as very dear friends. Yeah, that's a lovely that's a lovely thing to have, as you say, because it's not necessarily um, it doesn't always happen in that way in in any oh, uh, any oh. kind of work. You know, you never quite know whether that's that relationship's going to form, and we see it as well. By the way, you know, we obviously know you guys, um, but you know, we we see the connection when you're on stage. You can you can feel it. Yeah, because I think it's, especially on Rob's show, it's such a huge show that it's very rare that things run absolutely smoothly. There's always going to be some small thing that maybe the audience don't know, maybe you see, but um, it could just be as simple as a trip or a, you know, a mic slide, you know, it could be something... But it's always a lot of fun when, like, when something does happen. Obviously, we know we're giggling. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I think we do forget that, you know, maybe there might be a camera on us or things. Yeah. <laughs> like, I probably think, are we okay? Like, we're just dying with laughter. It's something very, very silly. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fun. And, and then came the Take the Crown stadium tour. Um, do you have some memories from, from that time? some amazing memories i am um, that i think actually i don't know if i've said this already about another tour <laughs> i was gonna say that was my favorite tour i think <laughs> it was my favorite tour but um that really was a special tour because i think um i mean for the for us back in vocals i think especially as you know dinosh is a uh trained dancer myself and Nayana not so much right um but we were obviously all sort of having to dance a lot for that tour. I think that was the first one without any uh, dancers on it. Um, so, yeah, we had a lot of moments on that. Some real fun times. Um, one, one of the, again, when I say things go wrong on stage, which maybe the audience won't know, but we obviously do. Um, I don't know if you remember the huge head. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> dance on, and I I can't remember which song it was. Now there was a song that we used to stand sort of up the stairs. I think Rob was on the top. Come undone, maybe. I'm not sure. It was in that section. I think yeah. it might have been. Uh, oh gosh, it will come to me when it's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, but it was in that sort of section. So there was a couple that we used to do there and there used to be these jets of water that would squirt yeah which used to obviously be lots of fun 
Um, and on this particular day, again, as I said, we spend, you wouldn't know it sometimes, but we do spend quite a while before the show doing our hair, makeup, getting ready, trying to look good. Um, so we were on the stairs and we're like dancing, we're trying to give it our all, look as sexy as possible. Like, yeah, we, we've got this, girls. And um, <laughs> the head started to squirt the water out. But obviously that day, the wind wasn't in our favour. <laughs> literally squirted out directly into my face. So oh as no. I'm, I'm oh like, no. literally <laughs> like a fireman's hose, just <laughs> directly to the face. And I remember clinging on to the, the banister for like trying to like stay alive, basically. And then looking up at like Dinosh and Nayana, who were also absolutely drenched. Oh, no. Just crying with laughter because we knew how ridiculous we must have looked trying to be all sexy, like, you know, and then just getting actually like drenched. Did Rob spot that and say anything? Um, I don't remember if he could see us or not. I mean, he probably saw the aftermath of us looking like drowned rats hanging on the side, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure. But I, I just remember, yeah, we we laughed for like to this day, it's still one of our jokes if we're like, you know, walking and we get wet, we're like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What about the Let Me Entertain You tour or the Heavy Entertainment Show tour? Memories from that as well. The Heavy Entertainment tour, I think that's when the dancers, there were loads of dancers. Came back, yeah. Yeah. Dancers came back. Always amazing when the dancers come back because, well, it takes attention off of my dance. But also because they're all just so amazing. Um, And it's also... I love watching the show, watching them dancing as well while we're doing the show. It's always like, oh, wow. Like, um, but, yeah, that was another really fun tour. I think um, I can't remember any sort of any mishaps that would have <laughs> happened on that. I think that's probably one of the smoother tours. Probably, again, because I wasn't dancing <laughs> right all the time. Um, but, yeah, that was all an amazing tour. And, again... Yeah have so many dancers and everybody be amazing it's almost yeah. you think they audition people for personalities because somehow they always just manage to get the nicest people it's yeah oh that's really good lovely. and then what about las vegas was that a career highlight playing there oh i loved vegas i loved it was um yeah i, I wish we could go back I absolutely yeah. loved it. It was, um, I think, definitely one of those things you tick off the bucket list. Hmm. Um, I, but weirdly, not one of the things I knew that was on the bucket list until you do it. And then you're like, oh, I'm like, this is amazing. So glad I've done this. Um, the shows were just great, a lot of fun. I loved just the feathers and the spark. As you can see, I love sparkle and it was right up my alley with all of that. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I think just to be with with everyone in that sort of environment. And, I mean, uh, Nayana, Dinosh and I were also living together. <laughs> that was, right, yeah. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it, that was something that I don't think um, – I knew how much I would enjoy that, but I absolutely loved it. And would if there was if Rob was like, oh, I'm thinking of going back again, I'd be like, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, let's we'd do. All, we'd all love him to go back again. Yeah, it was it was great, and he was just great. I think it's difficult um, to sort of say which is more fun with Rob when he does his rock yeah. sort of stuff or the swing sort of stuff because he's so good at both. So yeah. It, that's almost annoying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I always think I'd uh, rock Robbie, but then when you go to Vegas, you're just it's so amazing. You have so much fun. It was incredible. You think, actually, I love swing Robbie. Exactly. That, and that's, yeah, that's sort of, again, that's one of the things. I'm like, oh, no, when you're doing the rock thing, you're like, I love this. It's just, oh, I love this. And then you do the, the swing mm-hmm. stuff and you're like, it's, it's, yeah, you're sort of sucked. And I'm not, I must confess, I don't sit at home and listen to swing. No. So to sort of do it on Rob's, like, Rob's gig, then suddenly you're like, this, this is amazing. It is absolutely 
the hell they listen to this at home? What the hell have I been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think only Christmas time is the only time I'll yeah. sort of throw on some Sinatra or something. But yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's yeah, that's definitely another fun section of Rob. It was an incredible show. So good. Yeah. And to see him in the smaller, see you all in that smaller venue. Well, not small. It wasn't small, but it, well, it certainly like, wasn't a stadium. Yeah. It was a lovely theatre. Yeah, it wasn't a stadium, there. but it, yeah, it wasn't small. It wasn't a stadium, yeah. but it was, it was intimate. And yet it still, yeah, it had that big feeling. I think for us as well, because obviously it was a purpose-built theatre, mm. stage, it was felt huge. It was mm. Um, yeah, a lot going on on that stage. Yeah, I have to ask. I didn't have this on the question list, but it's come to me. Were you there when the earthquake uh, oh. happened on stage? What was that like? <laughs> oh, Rob was was like swinging, up. <laughs> swinging in the air. Um, I and you know it was. I think everyone was pretty calm, considering mm. because yeah, again, that's one of the things you look back at and you're like, what? <laughs> but, um. Yeah, it was that was the craziest, the craziest feeling in the in this sort of no, just as we were going to go on as well. It was sort of like, is, are we sure about this? And then I think for the whole show, it was just in the back of your mind, like, are we going to continue? Like, <laughs> but you sort of go with everyone. Rob was still calm; he was getting on with it. So it's like, well, if you're in, I'm in. Let's, yeah. The show must go on, yes. <laughs> and it did. <laughs> and what was the under the radar gig like for you? Obviously, as fans, we were very happy to have that, you know, very fan focused gig at the Roundhouse. How was that? You know, no, no number ones, no angels. <laughs> um, yeah, set wise, strange to not not do that. Um, but such a fun gig. That's when we wore the pyjamas, right? Yeah, yeah we were all in pyjamas, yes. <laughs> I think Janosh and I were barefoot. I think oh. We, we started, I think, in slippers. I think we tried to be cute with, like, slippery heels, um, and then it was like, would we wear pyjamas and heels? No, we would wear bare feet or slippers, you know, <laughs> flat. And um, it was one of the most comfortable gigs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Ever done. It was, yeah, it was so much fun. It was such a good idea as well. And I think um, everybody really got into the spirit. Even the crew had on like one. Yeah. Oh, did they? <laughs> Every, even backstage, everybody was like, we're going to make the most of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like what we used to call like Mufti, Mufti Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. Yeah, that was a really great one. And then I think because it was in the Roundhouse, um, that's also such an iconic sort of venue. I think it all just made the whole evening very special. I think because it's not huge either, so I guess mm. – um, would have been, I don't know, for fans, I guess, difficult as to, to get tickets, I would imagine. Well, they were just gifted through um, his chat thing that he had at the time. So it was only certain people that could buy the tickets. So, yeah. Which was we, the best way of doing it. I was about to say, which is so <laughs> special. So I think, yeah, I, I love that gig. Yeah. yeah. There aren't many artists that do that kind of thing. So we were very appreciative of him doing that and obviously when we spoke to him he said you know I got as much out of it as you guys did because I was singing songs that I really love and enjoy and you know can't normally sing when I'm in the big stage so yeah it was special yeah yeah I love that we we really enjoyed that one on the latest 25 tour and gigs you've shared the backing vocals between you Dinosh Elle and Louise meaning you all didn't have to attend every date and you could have some time off was it nice sharing the load physically and mentally? Um, well, yeah, obviously I was pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Elle stepped in, um, which is, yeah, I love Elle. Um, yeah, it was obviously when you I needed to be at home. I don't yeah. think anybody wanted to see the giant snowman on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I became. Um, and also when you, obviously when you have a, a baby you don't I don't even think I realize just how much you sort of you do need to be home 
um obviously i knew you need to you do need yeah. to be happy. but i mean i don't think i realized how much you want to sort of just do nothing basically yeah. <laughs> the little one um and yeah i think it's i think it's been just great to sort of not feel that sort of pressure either it's 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 nice to sort of come back and and sort of be able to spend some time and yeah i think it's it's been a it's it's just like a big family yeah mm. oh, lovely and how has performing and touring with rob changed over the years would you say um <laughs> i mean um it's it's very different but it's it's i don't want to say it's less rock and roll because i think on the stage it's definitely still very very rock and roll yeah um i think everyone has sort of grown up a bit because i guess we had to i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would say i mean yeah then you did interview jerry <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's definitely calmed down as it's a lot more family um, orientated now, which I think yeah. is it's just life. I guess that kind of happens. I think, mm. yeah, you you have your fun years of carefree, and um, and now I think everyone's a little bit. I think hangovers definitely hit harder once you get older. <laughs> so I don't. Think, <laughs> oh yes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you just, it's not fun. Whereas once upon a time you would go and party the night away and then come on and just put some dark glasses on and like still rock out. Now it's a bit like, oh, do I need this up so loud? <laughs> <laughs> Turn down, oh, just a bit, you know, it's sort of, it doesn't, it's not quite as rock and roll. You know. <laughs> Is there anything about performing, performing with Rob that's unique compared to working with other artists, like his performance style or the fact he barely shows up for rehearsals? <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of his style. I do think <laughs> that is his style. Um, I think also it's what makes the show, I think you can tour with people and obviously we rehearse and we rehearse and we learn a show and then especially with most artists that's the show so you know the show whereas with Rob you don't really know the show until the show is happening <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it just leaves it open it just means every night as much as the audience are waiting to see what's going to happen tonight you know we are too because we don't really know <laughs> <laughs> have anything planned so I think <laughs> That's the nice thing about you could tour with him for, well, I was going to say for near 20 years um, and still not really know what the <laughs> show would be, which is, is really nice. Yeah, that's what we love as well, obviously. Yeah, I think when people say, oh, you, why do you go and see the gigs, the, the one tour more than once? It's like, well, because no show is the same, you know, at all <laughs> in any way. <laughs> well, it is, obviously, but yeah, there's those unexpected <laughs> moments and we love those. Yeah, you just don't know. I mean, obviously as well, because he likes to talk to, to the audience and everyone so much, you never know who he's going to speak to or what they're going to say, yeah. what, he's gonna, sort of, what he's going to say to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think, yeah, there's so many moments. He always has moments in the show where you anything can happen. Yeah. So... Moving on to you again, you've written a short book about your experience of Crohn's disease and how it affects your tour life. The link's available on Sarah's Instagram bio, if anyone would like to read it. And we'll put it on the website page as well. Okay. You credit Rob's tour masseuse Yvonne with turning your life around by encouraging you to eat healthier food. How hard was it living on the road with Crohn's and how much easier is it for you now? Um, I think because I actually got diagnosed with it uh just out of the Kylie tour so many many moons ago um and I during that Kylie tour obviously I had no idea I just thought I was really ill I had no idea what was going on and I think also because it was such a new um a new experience for me I didn't want to tell anybody that I was ill mm -hmm. because I think you instantly think oh they're just gonna get rid of me yeah 
So I really hid it for the whole tour. Um, and then sort of got into a thing of just hiding it in life anyway, because you're so sort of embarrassed and you're, you just have no clue what's going on. Um, and I also don't, I think now it's weird. I feel like now that I've sort of said, well, yeah, I've got Crohn's and I've suffered with this. So many people I've discovered have it and so many people, it's so much more spoken about now. Whereas I think like, you know, nearly 20 years ago, no one spoke about it, but I think, um, being on tour with it again, as I said, it was it was really difficult to start with because I didn't tell anyone, so um, I would be struggling with it a lot. Obviously, Yvonne um, was the masseuse, so she was. I think I had an injury or something, so she would was working on that injury quite a lot, and then we got talking. And um, she was sort of encouraging me, you know, you you need to do this and that for inflammation and all this stuff. And she's like the oracle of like the body. She just knows everything, what's connected to what, (laughs) like like response connected to She knows Mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Um, And I guess being on tour, it is easier in some ways because we'd have catering. So you do have access to the best food and to healthy food but also you can obviously it can go the other way because sometimes because of your schedule you might get to a hotel in the evening and all that's on the night menu is like chips and pizza yeah so it, it can be really difficult but um I think learning about it and realizing okay even to be fair at that time I don't feel like the hospitals or the 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 mm. doctor even really understood it yeah. obviously doctors are there to treat the problem and to just try and I guess suppress whatever the, the but they're not I wouldn't say they understood it enough to be like this will cure it yeah it just sort of make you comfortable but at the same time that was also making me a lot worse because mm-hmm. obviously painkillers and all that stuff it yeah. does not great things to your stomach anyway. So I think, um, yeah, really trusting Yvonne, how much she knows about the body in health wise, as opposed to trusting medicine where, you know, obviously we do trust doctors and we, we know that they're doing their best to sort of make you feel better. Yeah. And I don't think a doctor would necessarily say to you, get rid of the the tablets and everything that's going to, you know, obviously make you able to, to be normal <laughs> um, and really push through. Until, yeah. I don't think that's ever going to be something they recommend because it was a lot to sort of get from right. there, where I am now. And it took, you know, quite a few years of really believing, all right, eventually I'm naturally going to be okay. Right. But right now, this is not fun. Yeah. It took a long time, but yeah, I'm really good now. That's which good. I had sort of thought, all right, I'm going to write a book about this because I think, again, it's one of those illnesses people don't really talk about, people don't really understand it. And I think I really wanted to show that there are other options if you're willing to sort of go through the tough times. There are other options because at one point they were going to give me a uh, – Oh gosh, like a like a sto- stoma bag. They right. were going to part of my bowel because it was obviously so inflamed and infected. And and I um, remember just speaking to a, another lady in the hospital, and she was like, "Do not do it." And I thought, okay, I'll I'll try and cling out, you know, cling on a bit longer and see how we go. And I, now I'm oh so grateful that actually I listened to her and because. Yeah. The- illnesses they could remove a piece of it but then that doesn't say you're not going to get inflammation in another point so we're right. going to cut until I would literally have no intestine left yeah but actually healing it was the better option yeah yeah here I am mm. today and with a child which I at some points in my life didn't think was going to yeah. be possible oh that's lovely to know yeah wow what an incredible story and journey. So what is the best thing for you about touring? Um, do you know what? I, 
again, I think life changes so much. So your perspective on it. Yeah. I think years ago it was just all fun. It was just the traveling, the the sort of the camaraderie from everyone, feeling like you're, you know, in a big team and just fun. Um, and I, always, I almost remember like some tours coming back and having what we used to call tour blues. When yeah. you come home, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to be back on tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think as life does, it changes. And obviously now I can't wait to get home. Now I'm like literally, can I be on the earliest flight, you know, <laughs> because obviously I want to get home to my little one. So I think life has definitely changed, which changes your kind of outlook on yeah. on things. But um, I think, yeah, touring is just one of those things that you can't really explain. Mm. Um, it's got so many great things about it. Now, weirdly as well, I, I used to love traveling. Now it's like when you do get home, it's like the thought of even going on holiday. I'm like, have we got to take a plane? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's like I would so much rather now go somewhere in England just to drive. <laughs> Not going to the airport. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. What's your <laughs> What's your favourite Rob song to perform live? Oh, um, definitely entertain to perform live. It's yeah. just, it's just the energy. It's the song like that is you know everyone's going to be. I love mm. the jump in. I love the. It's just you know the show's begun. It's. Yeah height of everything you're you're so excited about the show that's gonna come I feel like that always gets mixed up in that song for me it's like I don't know am I just enjoying the song so much or am I just so excited it's like (laughs) you feel so much in that song when we're sort of stood there it's you can just feel everything bubbling up like oh this is it this is it um so performance wise yeah I think it would be entertain just for the energy yeah Mm. and i mean you've mentioned quite a few things already about working with rob but how would you sort of encapsulate what what is it what's the best thing about working with rob um i think apart from as i said never knowing (laughs) what it's gonna be um, (laughs) never knowing i mean he is also a prankster he's loves pranks he loves um yeah he loves fun and he loves sort of just being a clown (laughs) (laughs) and I think he's happy which is again why he's so much fun on stage because he I think he enjoys making people laugh yeah whatever he is sort of going for as I said you don't notice because he's so focused on making making you laugh oh. <laughs> it's great talents that yeah. yeah definitely as soon as he walks into a room it's the energy just lifts for sure if you could rewind back to one moment in in your career and relive it what would it be um <clears throat> one moment probably <laughs> It would probably be the the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd say that. Could, yeah. I'd probably go back and view it completely different, <laughs> sing it completely different, do some, <laughs> yeah, live that entire thing completely differently. Yeah. And can you recall the funniest thing that's happened to you while working with Rob? Um, I guess you've told a few already. You have told a few. Yeah. Those, yeah. yeah. I've yeah probably un- unwittingly told quite I mean, I mean I do also another running joke we would have is um on I think it might have been the Close Encounters tour we used to come up at the back of the stage and sort of be across the back um, oh yeah, yeah. Tour, actually, with Nayana and D that we also used to do the same where we'd come up at the back and um you we would as we would come off the stage to go around there we would obviously run into the quick change and be doing our hair, doing our makeup, doing everything. I mean, Nay and Dia, the, like literally would be a scene from Showgirls running to get into the middle. 
to get my hair. Oh my god! <laughs> and then we literally have like minutes, and then it would be like, right, go, go, go. We run back on stage, and you know, and um, I can remember one more than one occasion, but on occasion, running back out and realizing you've left your mic. Oh, <laughs> the worst feeling it literally it's that thing of going on a fun fair ride and it dipping yeah higher inside oh. falling and getting on stage and being like oh, oh my god <laughs> there's nothing here <laughs> and having to like dance your way back to go and grab it from someone <laughs> oh no <laughs> all part of the show ha 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 when actually like it was just yeah actually, but that's all <laughs> A running joke, we would be running on stage and then look, have you got your mic? Have you got your mic? <laughs> also, falling and like uh, dropping your mic would also be that's happened. I'm not going to bring up who it happened to, but because she will let me forget. <laughs> <laughs> I think it may have been Dinosh. I think she told I us about it that. It may one. have been very she loud and story. on stage. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but she started out like a pro and she carried on and that's sort of, yeah, so it happens, <laughs> but that's what you do. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the moment you're most proud of in your career? Um, proud of? Um, I was going to say just growing up. Um, I think... Uh, sometimes I do wonder but I think yeah I think sort of when I look back at all the tours and I look back at everything um, especially Rob's tour looking back even though in my mind at the time because I was obviously it was like in my early 20s so in my mind I was a full adult functioning I knew everything obviously yes. um, and now when I look back I'm like who who was that person who was who was that innocent imbecile walking around being you know let left alone to do these things but um and it's also kind of scary because I think wow really they trusted me to sort of be on my own out in this world um when I look back I'm like wow I've definitely I think each tour you kind of grow because you let different things happen you learn different things people make such a, a different impact in your life. So you, I think over the years, I've got so much knowledge from different people. Um, David Entoven, who was obviously Rob's manager for many, he was like a fountain of knowledge. So I spent a lot of time meeting him in like for breakfast in the morning. I would like try and time it. Oh, when would David be there? Just to go and pick his brains because he just, knew everything amazing stories of just yeah. you know a world that was beyond me um so I think yeah my I think I've yeah looking at me growing is mm. sort of big achievement obviously having my son is yeah huge for me um obviously with the Crohn's and everything else in life yeah. um, that's been a huge huge achievement and mm -hmm. But yeah, I think growing, growing is a, a, a thing that we don't, um, I don't think any of us really give ourselves sort of, what's the word? Credit. The, uh, credit, yeah. Mm. That I mean, when you can, you know, I think we can sometimes get so hung up on mistakes we've made and things that we wish we could change and do differently that we don't actually give ourselves credit for, but you are here and you've, yeah. you know, you've got through it and here you are today and you're still alive. So, mm. well done. Yeah. That self-compassion is really important, isn't it? We have to remember that. Yeah. We, like, we know we're very, I think, can be very compassionate for other people and mm -hmm. we put ourselves out a lot for other people. And then sometimes you have to actually think, but, you know, well done. Well done, me. For yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. For just getting through today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And do you have a particularly favourite show or concert gig that you can remember? I mean, obviously you've done so many, so I know that's a difficult question, but is there any any that stick out in particular for you? I, do you know what? I think one of the most beautiful 
things I think I've looked out and seen. I think it might have been Tallinn. Yeah. Tallinn, um, I just remember looking out and it becoming almost like a sea. I mean, a lot, most of Rob's gigs become like a sea. And also, you might not know this, anyone who does know me, I am blind as a bat. So whenever yeah. people are like, oh. you get stage fright, I'm like, I can only barely see the front row. Barely, <laughs> barely. Like, I'm more focused on actually trying to just see Rob because <laughs> I'm so blind, um, which is been a good thing in some ways because yeah. I don't tend to get stage fright because I don't really know anyone else. <laughs> um, but also sometimes, you know, you do want to see stuff. And I think looking back, I think more looking back at the photos and the um, just the feeling and the energy and the shape of, I remember it was really long as opposed to normally everything goes mm. yeah. outwards. Um, just I just remember thinking, wow, this is pretty huge. And I think that one was like televised. It was. It was that was yeah. the one that was televised to cinemas. That's right. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know if that had been done before, but I remember just thinking, this is incredible. Like yeah. is this the way of the future now. <laughs> Did we just do it straight into cinemas? This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that would definitely be a moment that I would say, wow, yeah, that was Yeah. And what's your favourite Robbie song? Oh, um, it's a, this is a weird one. I love listening to "I Love My Life" because of what it means. Yeah, and I think especially now in my life, having my little one, being married, having a lovely husband, I um, there's many moments where I sort of listen to that, and I'm like, I get it. I really get it. I love my life. Um, but actually. I actually I love advertising space. Oh, and he did that the other day, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I, obviously, I wasn't at Hyde Park. Yeah, and um, I just love that song. I don't always have because that was on the first tour that I did. Yeah, and every night I would just be like, "I love this song." It's just yeah, it's just one of those. I think it's one of those ones that I sort of looked over, but actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's such just a, an amazing song yeah we were also pleased to see it come back when yeah. we were in Hyde Park and, and the production of it the whole it was epic it yeah. really was oh, yeah the VT the mm. yeah and that again it's so difficult for us when we're on stage to not <laughs> yeah, and I, it doesn't look the same exactly for us obviously because we're so close to it yeah but, it's just in like when we've had any sort of sound checks or rehearsals my favorite thing to do is stand out and look back to see what you guys see yeah it's so great it's really really nice yeah they did it really well well we hope he keeps it in the set so that when you are in on on stage in the future you're you're a part of it as well (laughs) (laughs) hopefully hopefully he's also going to sing a load of new songs well, as well. We, yeah we want the new songs we know he doesn't always like singing new songs but uh <laughs> he's, he's he's famously on record for saying that but uh i think with the new album and everything on the way that he will have to sing some of those yeah new songs, he's gonna have he? to so. <laughs> so we look forward to that on the next tour <laughs> well, so, so thank you yeah thank you so much for spending the time with us we know that you've got crazy busy schedule with your son and everything as well so appreciate if you're taking the time to have a chat with us. It's so lovely to hear your story. Um, we've seen you um, perform so many years now, so it's really nice to hear, you know, how that all unfolded for you and, and uh, you know, where you are now. And, um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you up on stage in the future as well. Yeah, definitely. I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sarah Thank Jane. you. I'll try and wave if I see you in the crowd. <laughs> Don't ever think I'm, like, rude if you're... Hi, and I'm I cannot see you. <laughs> okay, we'll bear that in mind. <laughs> I'll bring a big fluorescent jacket Dramatic or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sir Jane. You. Appreciate Thank it. You. Really lovely. Thank you. Robbie Williams Rewind.